Hi there, good afternoon everybody and thank you for joining us today. Uh, you've uh, <clears throat> logged into the Unpacking Project Management, how Apollo 13 and President Kennedy can help you become an outstanding project manager and decide which quali qualifications best match your role. Um, it's a slightly different approach uh, to the typical approach to the webinars. Uh, today we have the opportunity that um, uh, our presenter, uh, Steve Kendall, will actually be interviewed by one of our associates, Fiona Pauli. Uh, so there'll be a number of questions which they're going to be asked about his experience within project management, uh, some of his ideas, his, his experience over 30 years, etc. Uh, what this might do uh, is potentially spark some additional questions from yourselves. Uh, in the <clears throat> on your screen, you should be able to see the ability to uh, enter questions into the group chat. Uh, what we'll do if you enter the questions into the chat, and at the end of the session, we'll have the opportunity to address as many of those questions as possible. Um, so we just go through probably about 45 minutes with a Q&A with Steve and Fiona. And I said, enter any questions into the chat and then we can uh, hopefully address as many of those as we can at the end as well. Uh, but uh, conscious of time, so I'll hand straight over to Fiona and Steve and I hope you all enjoy the presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Uh, really lovely to be here. Uh, my name is Fiona. I am uh, known as Fiona the Coach. I'm predominantly a business coach. Um, specialising in emotional intelligence development, particularly with engineers and engineering organisations. Um, in my previous careers, uh, project management has actually played a really big part in managing motor racing championships or event delivery. I've never been professionally trained, so I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, Steve's uh, top tips today um, around the project management and how those um, skills can be best utilised. So without further ado, we do have uh, Steve Kendall on today. He is a fellow of the Association for Project Management, as well as one of the in um, Institution of Mechanical Engineers trainers. Uh, so Steve, would you like to give us a little uh, hello and welcome from your side? Thank you, Fiona. Yes, indeed. So um, I'd like to uh, just tell you a little bit of few seconds of my, my credentials. Um, I studied engineering at Nottingham University. Uh, I also went on to do a master's degree at uh, Aston in, in Birmingham. And I worked as, uh, as an engineer in telecoms for about eight years. Um, I'm a chartered engineer. I then moved into project management um, in telecoms and in computing um, and spent about 10 years as a project manager before making the transition into uh, project management consultancy and training, which I've now been doing for over 25 years. I've been very fortunate, um, I've been very um, pleased and happy to work with many um, diverse clients, uh, some very technical ones like um, uh, Sharp Laboratories and Rolls-Royce, um, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, the Royal Society of Chemistry, but also uh, clients in human resources, like the, uh, the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, um, and in law, I've uh, worked with the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Um, and so that's, that's my background. Um, a lot of uh, helping people make the transition from a technical role into a project management role. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Steve. Now, before we get into our conversation with Steve today, I've got some uh, questions that I'm going to ask him. And then, as Darren said, uh, by all means, start populating your questions in the attendee chat as we go through. Um, we're going to do a quick poll first. So for the for the audience and the attendees, um, our co-presenter, Robert, is going to bring up the poll. And the question is, are you considering a career in project management? And a very simple yes, no answer. Now, if you are already a project manager and working in project management, then please say yes. Um, and if th this is a, a food for thought um, webinar for you and you are considering, please say yes. And if you're unsure and you're you know, on the fence or not necessarily convinced, then please say no. So if I can ask Robert to bring up the poll. Just checking with the group. Can you see the poll? Okay. 
just checking in are we all right we having oh it's been shared okay i've been told the poll has been shared okay they can't see it okay oh Adele. Yeah, the poll, the poll is yes. working, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're just going to give it another few seconds. Welcome, Paul, you're a PM. We're in the right place, hopefully. Okay, five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, we're going to close the poll. Thank you very much. Um, right, should we get into it, Steve? Yes, please. Can we, can we clarify the basics? What is project management and how does being a project manager differ from operations or general kind of line management? Let's start there. Okay, well, um, whenever I'm asked what um, projects and project management is, is about, I, I always think, very simply, it's about doing new things. It's, it's new stuff, um, new products, new services, new, new processes. Um, so it, it's, it's a bit different from um, general management or line management. You know, the operations side of a business is different from the project side of a business. So operations is sometimes called business as usual. Um, operations is, is all about um, consistency and repeatability, whereas project management is about innovation and, and doing new things. So, for example, um, a general manager, a line manager, say, a line manager, um, a department manager um, will be responsible for a, a group of people, usually specialists, probably a single discipline, um, and they will be together for, for fairly long term the, and the manager will be responsible for their performance reviews and things like holidays and uh, and all that sort of stuff a project manager on the other hand um, is responsible for the outputs of a project that they will have a temporary team so the team will come together for the duration of the project and then they'll go off and disperse and and, and do other things um, the project will usually have multiple specializations there um, so um, the, the project manager will be uh, coordinating different specializations uh, you could say there it's a multidisciplinary project team or a cross-functional uh, project team and so the project manager will have people from different areas of the business different departments different functions and so it's very usual for the project manager not to have any formal line management authority and they've got to get this job done, but they haven't got the formal line 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 management authority that, uh, say, a line manager has. So the, the two the two um, areas are uh, very different, and I'm not saying that one is any better or worse than the other, but they are different. For sure, and I imagine the the challenges in that communication style when you don't have that line of authority um, can can be quite difficult for at, at the beginning when you're developing your skills as a project manager. Um, how did you get into project management and, and what would you determine as a normal route to being a project manager? Shall we have a little bit? Okay, look? so for, for me, uh, my route into project management um, was perhaps a little un unusual um, in the sense that, um, well, I, I, was, I was working as a, an engineer, senior, senior engineer, and my boss and his boss both left the company at the same time to go to the same place and when i met my the, the replacement my 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 new boss the, the new chief engineer um the first thing he said to me is steve when are you moving into your new office we weren't so open plan in, in those days and that was him effectively saying i am promoting you to a project manager so what well, one day i was an engineer the next day i was a project manager and i hadn't had any training or, or, or experience really in that way. Um, 
And it wasn't until a couple of years later in my next job, in my next organization, that I really began to well acquire the skills, understand what project management was was all about. We had a um, a managing director in that organization who really got project management. And I remember turning up to my first project team meeting. I was the new project manager, uh, just beginning this new, very technical, complicated project. And I was quite surprised to see that the managing director was in the room. And I, I naively said to him, uh, do you want to chair the meeting? And he said, Steve, absolutely not. You're the project manager. I'm here in my role as a technical specialist because he was a networking expert um, and, and, and you're the project manager. But what's different these days, I think, um, two things really, is I think there are um, a greater number of enlightened managers, I would say, the people who manage, who understand the value of coaching and mentoring, people who know that developing their own people um, is cheaper, less risky, and more effective um, than, than recruiting. And, this, and the second thing I think is there's a greater availability of good support and uh, there's, there's uh, project management training, project management qualifications um, that are much more available nowadays. Let's jump into that, Steve. So, so can you give us a little uh, top line overview of what type of project management qualifications are available? Okay, so um, there are um, project management qualifications available from the Association for, for Project Management. Um, they're not the only provider of, of project management training, of course. Um, so one that a lot of people will have heard of uh, is, is the PRINCE2 um, project management training route. Um, PRINCE is an acronym that stands for Projects in a Controlled Environment. Um, and it's a, 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 a government, uh, UK government sponsored um, training option. And it was, it was very, very popular, particularly in the public sector some, some years ago. I would say its, it's popularity has declined somewhat. It's un, unfairly, I think, got a reputation for being um, overly bureaucratic. Um, and I think that's because it's not been particularly well understood. Um, so the, the, the Prince route exists. I do think they, there was, um, uh, they should have called the second version, instead of calling it Prince 2, they should have called it the project management methodology formerly known as Prince. But anyway, that's a, that's an aside. Um, love music reference for everyone there. One of my favorites. Um, I should also perhaps mention the, the PMI, the Project Management Institute. Now this is a, um, and it's uh, an organization based in the United States. Um, they have project management qualifications, the PMP that some people may have heard of. Um, and in my experience, that's only really been relevant for people who work in um, American, uh, American based organizations, which brings us back to the, the APM. So the, the, the APM, I think, has done um, a, a great job in the 50 year uh, history, and I think project management is now is, is widely recognized as a transferable skill, um, which it wasn't always. I can remember some years ago, I went to see Bill Bailey. Many people will, will know who I'm talking about. Bill Bailey, the comedian, went to see him in, in Oxford. And uh, just briefly mentioned, um, at one point during his show, he said, I'd like a volunteer to come up on stage. Uh, anybody can come, come, come on stage. Anybody can come on stage, except I don't want any project managers because nobody knows what they do. And I think that that message now is, is, would, would be different. I think people recognize that there is um, such a thing as a transferable project management skill and that um, all projects have the, have the same, um, I say issues, you know, all projects require scoping, planning, estimating, managing risk, managing change, um, and there are best practice techniques for all of those things that can be acquired through through training. So the, the, the APM um, training begins with a thing called the PFQ, the Project Fundamentals Qualification. 
which is a, a two-day training course with a one-hour exam at, at the end of it and an internationally recognized qualification. Um, there's also um, the, the PMQ, the Project Management Qualification, which uh, is a five-day training course with a, a three-hour um, exam at, at the end of it, um, a very serious qualification, a serious amount of work, um, a lot of her hard work going into that for, for that qualification. Uh, so as a quick overview, um, that's, uh, that's qualifications. And, and I would say for more details, um, that, you know, that it's, it's possible to have a look at, at the Association for Project Management. I would just got to say, I'm not here today representing the, the, the APM. Um, I'm just talking about my, my, my experience with it. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. Um, now, I imagine, I mean, project management was something in my career that was sort of thrust upon me. You know, it's a little bit like becoming a leader versus a manager. You know, project management was was something that I accumulated in terms of my skill set and the style of communication and almost being the, the uh, conductor in that orchestra and mm. bringing, bringing lots of different you know, moving parts together and being responsible for those things. Um, and I, I'm i hoping we have lots of engineers, being that this is an institution of mechanical engineers webinar today, um, uh, dialing in. Uh, moving from engineer into project management roles, I can imagine is something that is, is potentially encouraged as career development or, you know, looking at different skill sets. How important is it a, having that technical specialist knowledge as an engineer in becoming a project manager. And also, what are what were the easiest and hardest things in your experience of making that transition? Gosh, um, this is an interesting question. Um, it's a perennial question that, that comes up about technical knowledge in the domain of the, of, of the project. And uh, interestingly, the surveys that have been done show that good project managers don't put the technical skills um, of the project's uh, field right at the top of the required skills. I think that's it's interesting. Whilst they say technical knowledge is important, it's not at the it's not at the top. It's not at the top of the list. So. That begs the question then what what things do they put at the top of the list and um the thing that consistently um seems to seems to be the focus of of, of good project managers is keeping focused on the objectives of, of the project of not just what we've got to do what we sometimes call the uh, the deliverables the products of the project the things that we've got to produce but it's wider than that, um, and there's a there's a very short story that, that I like to to share to illustrate this um, about three stonemasons, and I'll just share you share with you the three stonemasons story, which is um, somebody goes up to the first stonemason and says, "Can you tell me what you're doing?" And the first stonemason says, "Yes, I'm a I'm a stonemason. I'm uh, I'm laying these uh, blocks on top of each other and sticking them together with some some mortar." Uh, and he says, thank you very much. And he, he sees a second stonemason and says, can you tell me what, what you're doing? And the second stonemason says, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm building a wall. Uh, and he says, okay, thank you. Uh, and he moves along to the third stonemason and says, can you tell me, tell me what you're doing? And the third stonemason says, yes, I'm building a cathedral. And that, I think, illustrates that, you know, they were, they were all actually doing the same thing. But one of them understood the perspective, understood the... The, uh, not just that they were building a wall, the product, but that they understood the, the outcome, the benefit um, of doing it, the, cath the cathedral. And I think good project managers are ones that uh, focus on that beneficial gain, understanding what's the real reason why we're doing this project. Because the, the reason for that is it informs the decisions that you make on the, on the project. And now... I've got to the point where I've forgotten what the question was and uh, whether I've... The, the question, I mean, you have answered the question, but the question was, if you want to put a, a nice 
sort of one line summary on is how, how important is that technical specialism when transitioning into project manager? Yeah, and, and I would say it's it's not that important. It, it's very, we've got to be very careful that we don't take that answer to its opposite absurd uh, yeah. conclusion and say, well, you know, good project manager knows nothing about the field of the project. No, I'm not saying that at all. Um, not not really saying that at all, but I think um, th this uh, the, the managing director of this company once said to me, um, the most important, well, one of the most important skills of a project manager is to have a, a highly developed bullshit detective, pardon the expression. In other words, you need to know enough about the specialist areas that you're coordinating as this uh, conductor of the orchestra, if you like, to be able to spot when things aren't right. And in particular, there's one thing that I would say to be on the lookout is when you're working with a, a whole lot of different specialists. So I was uh, typically working in projects where I was co coordinating the work of hardware engineers, software engineers, mechanical engineers, marketing people, manufacturing people, customer support. And if the technical people say about some particular problem or or why something is taking longer than it was expected to do, if they say, oh, it's really technical, you, you wouldn't really understand. It's all to do with the left-handed splinge brackets and the air hooks or whatever. That's at the point where you need to say, well, hang on. If they can't explain this in a way that a moderately intelligent person can understand, then there's this bit of a smoke screen here. We need to do, dive into this a bit more deeply and find out what is going on. And that can be can be difficult um, because we know everybody's doing doing their best, but we've got to get in there and, and find out what the problem is. So, so uh, apart from the detector, let's say, that you will hone, um, that gut instinct, I would say, also it is quite um, useful when you're trying to, to pull all of that stuff together. Was there anything else that you found challenging transitioning from engineer to project manager? Um, I think one of the things, well, it's sort of building on what I just said, is that um, sometimes it, it you have to be, it feels quite hard. You know, pro projects have a tendency to slip. Delays can come in. We are very can be very optimistic in, in our estimating. And... We all have heard of projects that have been years late, you know, and I think, what is it that makes a, a, a project six months late or, or a year late? It's very unlikely that there's some big thing that's come along that suddenly shifted it. It's a process of attrition. We lose a week here, a, a few days there. And as a project manager, when you are checking the progress of the work and you find that something's slipped by a few days, you feel really quite, you know, it feels quite hard and difficult to um, to get it, you know, to get upset about that. And what you've got to realise is that people are trying their best. Nobody's nobody's deliberately making the project go, go more slowly. And what we've got to focus on is is the issue. It's not the person. You know, we're not saying you're stupid, you're lazy, or anything like that. We've got to say actually, you know. This thing was was due to be finished by the end of last week. Here we are at the end of this week. It's not happened. Let's find out why. We're not criticizing the individual. We are thinking about the, the issue itself and thinking, all right, okay, if this this is this has happened, so we can't turn time time backwards. What does it mean going forward? What have we got to do to correct this and to correct for potential further? recurrences of, of that issue um, in the future. And that, that is quite difficult to, 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 to realize that you've got to, take that, you've got to take that hard line, but it's about the problem, not the person. Yeah. So let, we, we um, marketed this uh, discussion and this, this conversation around um, Apollo 13 and what that can teach us <laughs> about project management. So what is it about Apollo 13 that has inspired you and, and, and is a great working example of good project management? OK, well, for me, um, putting a man on the moon is, has always been my uh, idea of the, the ultimate project. Um, it's so vast. I think there were about 100,000 people working on the project uh, at one time. It's, it's huge. Every single thing has got to go right for it to be a success. It only takes one thing to go wrong to make it a failure. So I have huge admiration for all those people that worked on it. Um, 
And in particular, I think of this guy, Gene Krantz, um, who some people will may have seen the, the videos there of, um, of NASA in Houston. He's the guy with the, uh, with the white waistcoat on. Um, and he's the flight director. He was a flight director on the Apollo 11, um, which was the moon landing. He was also the flight director on Apollo 13 um, and, and several others as well. And Apollo 13 was the one that went wrong, where um, the famous message came um, from them where they said, we have a problem, Houston. And this was where one of the two oxygen tanks had exploded and they were uh, 250,000 miles away from home. And uh, so what one of the things that Gene Krantz did was I would look at it and say what he did was he applied the principle of project management, the principle of, of a project. And he, he, he basically got together um, a small group of people um, different types of, um, of engineer um, and he pretty much said look this is what they've got they've got some duct tape they've got a piece of cardboard tubing they've got some scissors you know a few things put them in a room and said right you you don't come out of that room until we've got a solution to to getting these guys home and having getting them to be able to breathe enough oxygen um, to, to, to get home. So what, what was it that he did then specifically? Um, this is a bit of a mouthful, but it summarizes for me the best approach for project management, and it's this. It has to be a, a dedicated, co-located, multidisciplinary project team. And that's exactly what Gene Krantz did. Can you, can you, say, that, can you say that again slowly? So, yeah, it's so let me explain. So a dedicated, yeah. that doesn't mean that they were all really committed to the project. No, no, what it means is they were dedicated to just that one project, only working on one thing at a time. Instead of, you know, we, we often find ourselves splitting our time between this project and that project and, you know, half a dozen of, the, uh, of them. Uh, a dedicated project team is one where if it's absolutely mission critical, business critical in, in our case, mission critical for, for, the, for Apollo 13, they're, they're dedicated. That's the first thing. Co-located means they're... they're all in the same space together, not distributed geographically or within different time zones and, and that sort of thing. So co-located um, and multidisciplinary. So we have the right specialists. We let the specialists do do their job, and the project manager's role is to is to coordinate that. So that's what Gene Krantz did, and it, it's kind of it's always seemed to me as being a, a magnificent illustration of, of of good project management. Brilliant. Now we've had another question and we did reference this also. Um, what can we learn from President Kennedy? Hmm. Okay, well, this is, um, it's, it's just a very simple point, but it, it, it's, it's always stuck in, in, in my mind that with the idea of, of uh, putting a man on the moon, he could have said, um, you know, take the po politician's pretty broad brush idea. We're gonna put a man on the moon. You can just imagine certain American presidents spring to mind who would say we're going to put a man on the moon um what president kennedy said was and i i, I wrote this down so um i need to read it out he said we should commit ourselves to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth so the, the thing that I, I i pick up from that was you know he was a great if you like project sponsor um, a project, um, he was showing good project governance, really, because what he was saying was, um, is a clear goal. Is clarity is re really important. You know, this is a, it is a time bounded goal. Um, we're, we're not only going to put a man on the moon, but we're going to do it before the end of this decade. So this was in the early 60s, and we're going to do it a bit bump by uh, the end of the 60s, which they did. It was 1969. Um, I remember it well. I was a teenager then. Um, and he emphasized the commitment. We're going to commit ourselves to, to this. Now, very often project managers um, or pro project, if, if, an, if an organization is struggling with, with projects and finding that they always seem to be a bit late or they always seem to be harder work than we think they're going to be, senior managers may, may interpret that as being, it's the project manager's fault. We've got to send all these project managers on some tra training courses. Um, which 
you know, um, training project managers and, and acquiring the skills, yes, it's absolutely vital. You must do that. But also the senior management need to be committed to the projects and the project way of working and, and, and understanding their role, uh, is, which is different from, it's not, it's not being a, a, a mega project manager. There are different, different things there. So Kennedy was, was good in, in, in emphasizing commitment in that short sentence that he, sa he said there. And the third thing I think is um, he was very clear about the scope of the project because it wasn't just, hey, we'll put a man on the moon. It was that important, very, very important thing of, and we'll get them back safely. And that is uh, very, very tricky. So it wasn't a question of, we put a man on the moon. And then, you know, a bit later saying, oh, uh, are we going to get them back safely as well? That's, um, that's what we call creeping scope, which is where, oh, can I add a little bit to the project? Can I, can you, can you, while you're at it, could, could you do this? So that for me is, you know, three lessons from, from a short sentence from, from Kennedy is uh, pretty important. Brilliant. Now, it, you've talked about creep and you've talked about you know why does it overrun by six months and you know quite often it's under budgeted or under resourced why do projects go wrong how how can we prevent that from happening what examples have we got that you know we we can reflect on okay i think there's uh there's a large number of reasons why why projects do go wrong um but a couple, I suppose, I could I could mention um, th this idea that uh, of, of creeping scope is uh, you know it's it's very difficult. Can, it can be very difficult uh, to combat the idea of of, of creeping scope. Um, so uh, a couple of, uh, of 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 illustrations really relating to. To parliament buildings and i'm going to this is very very oversimplifying what actually went on but nevertheless there's there's a there's a deal of truth in this is that um when the scottish parliament was was built in in edinburgh um there was a big outcry at the end of it because it was um so overspent so over budget uh, and, and over time scale and the people who were um, outraged at it were the very people who had, when presented with, a, oh, shall we have this nice, um, I don't know, marble staircase or whatever it was, they kind of went, oh, yes, that's nice, we'll have that. Um, and so the scope of the project was 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 being in, in, increased um, little little by little, and it was very, very over budget at the end. Whereas in contrast, my understanding is that um, to, that happened to a much lesser degree when the welsh parliament was built when it was kind of oh should we have this uh you know should we have this atrium in the middle of the, of the building and they went uh how much is that going to cost what's how is it going to affect the time scale let's decide and so the, the the message here i think is um when you're a project manager um and people say oh um could you just do this could you just add that could you just do this um clearly the right the right answer isn't oh yes we'll do that or no, no, um, you know, we've got the scope of this project sorted out. Well, I'm not going to change it for you. Um, so if, if yes and no are not the right answer, what is the right answer? I think the right answer is, well, we probably can do that. Let's look at what the implications will be. What will be the impact on the budget? What will be the impact on the timescale? What will be the impact on the other things that, we, that we're, we're doing? Let's get that information, and then we can decide whether to include this with a revised scope of of the project so that's that's one way that things go wrong i think another big reason why projects go wrong is overconfidence we underestimate the risks we underestimate the amount of time that it's going to going to take to to, to do things we have over um, overconfident estimates um so an example of that i i suppose um back in history was thinking about the the Panama Canal that was built to link the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. Um, there were several false starts. Lots of digging went on, but not much progress was, was actually made. Um, lots of people died. And then there was a new project manager took over who was um, ex-military as it happens. But he realized the value of 
setting up the project right in the first place. They built villages to house the workers. They had bakeries and doctors and, and they spent about two years getting all the infrastructure, the conditions, making the conditions for success right for, um, for the project. And then they fired the starting pistol, as it were, um, and the project went forward much more smoothly and successfully was was concluded. And so I think we've got to guard against, um, and this, this is one thing that I, I find particularly in engineering projects and with technical specialists, they're very eager to get on with it. Let's get down into the detail. And what about this little detail? And what about that little detail? And as a project manager, you often have to stand back and say, well, hang on a minute. Um, before we launch off um, at 100 miles an hour, let's make sure we're going in the right direction. Let's make sure we've got the scope clear of this, this project. We know what the, the objectives are. We've got realistic plans in place and then, and then we'll go. Yeah, I think, you know, just to kind of um, summarize what you're saying there, ha having that really cl clear goal or objectives or outcomes, um, you know, w we're building the cathedral, we're not, you know, just laying blocks, um, will really help project managers to um, justify and quantify those yes, no answers. Because, you know, even as not as project managers, I'm sure lots of people on this um, call, you know, someone comes past your desk, oh, if you've got five minutes, can you just, can you just do this thing in your day to day work? And of course, it's going to have a knock on effect. And I, I guess as project managers, in terms of the skills that you have, or the skills that you're developing and honing, it's understanding what are the impacts on the technical specialism with those project managers, um, or sorry, with those various departments, if we do do this thing or we don't do this thing, what is the impact on the goal? And then communicating that really, really clearly. And, you know, again, going back to what you were saying, it's not personal, it's not about your work is not good enough or it's lazy or it's late but actually you know communicating in a way that this is the challenge that we are facing in order for us to get to this place um what other advice would you give um to people considering um being project managers or people at the early stages of their career uh for okay a um, project management role? yeah that's a good question um i think if somebody has the opportunity to move into project management then I would say, yes, do it. Well, and you know, he would say that, wouldn't he? Um, I think if the opportunity is there, that, that's great. But I think um, more helpfully, perhaps, uh, thinking about uh, ways into project management. Um, and here are a couple of suggestions, really. I think what really helps project managers is if they're the people working on their project, their project team members, if you like, if they adopt or um, use some of the tools and techniques of project managers, of project management, to, to take ownership for their own workload. Uh, in other words, if they help with the, the planning, the estimating, the assessing and managing risks, that they are forward looking with um, identifying problems whilst there's still time to fix them, coming up with, with, with solutions. Um, and how do they do those things? Well, the support is, is available for developing those, those skills. One way in um, with, with, the, uh, with the IMECI, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, is the project working for engineers course that that, that that title is a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful and it's not necessarily um um putting the message across that we should, um, we should it, maybe it, give it an acronym steve what you reckon yeah well, pwe i suppose project working for engineers is about um it's a it's a it's a sort of it's a one day quick introduction to some tools and techniques for planning and estimating and managing risk uh, a monitoring monitoring progress that can be very helpful as a as a as a project team member uh, to help move in that direction into the transition of, of 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 project management. Another option, really another suggestion, is that um, 
well, is recognizing that project management is only one half is about those project management technical skills to do with planning and managing risk that I've just been talking about. The other half, of course, and some people would say it's the bigger half, is managing people uh, and achieving the results um, without that line management authority. So an, another possible route would be beginning with, say, either the project working for engineers that I just mentioned or the, the project fundamentals qualification, so the APM PFQ, Project Fundamentals Qualification, which is the, the two-day course, um, and then using those tools and techniques um, on your project work, but then backing that up with something to do with the people skills, the soft skills. Um, we have a training course called Leading Your Project Team, which is about those leadership skills, about team working and influencing and uh, delegation. That's a great that's a great course. There's another one in the in the uh, IMEC suite about um, achieving results to it with, without authority. So I would say it's it's don't um, don't kind of do an introductory course and then think right I'm ready for the advanced course now. Take that secondary um, uh, uh, or not secondary parallel um, idea of of acquiring the the soft skills the people skills that will be so important in becoming a, a good project manager. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, um, there, there are lots of different options in terms of types of qualification and, you know, kind of formalizing your project management. But if you are at the, if you are at the beginning of your transition and you are an engineer, and you're interested in it. You know, certainly that there will be other project managers, hopefully within your organization or people you can network network with um, and, you know, look to get some maybe some mentoring um, at the institution. We also we also do uh, one to one coaching as well if people are looking to have that very specific tailoring. But we, we can all practice project management in our day to day, you know, from the moment we get out of bed to getting in the car or getting on the train and getting to work and how we communicate when things are going wrong. Um, you know, they, they are not isolated skills. Um, so, so if you are at the beginning, um, there's lots of opportunity to practice. And then if you are qualified, you know, there, there is lots of opportunity to kind of um, become chartered, for example, or, you know, look at developing your qualifications a bit further. Um, we are going to wrap it up there, Steve, because I don't know if you've been watching, but I've been watching. And we've got lots and lots of questions from the audience. I tried to weave a couple of them in in our conversation. Is there anything you want to close with? Um, yes, there is. I, I would just say this. I think um, uh, a move into project management is, in my view, is great because it's, uh, you know, the, the life of a project manager is it's varied, it's interesting, it's rewarding. But the other thing I want to say is this. It, moving into project management does not mean leaving the world of engineering and leaving the technical things behind. It means still being in engineering, still being in a technical role, but having a broader application of those technical skills. It's not leaving it behind and saying bye-bye to it. No, it's, it's, it's that and, it's technical and project management rather than instead of. Brilliant, thank you, Steve. Now back to the back to the audience. We are going to take that poll again, very simply. Um, are you a project manager? And now that you've heard from Steve, um, you want to stay in project management and continue doing the great work that you're doing, or are you inspired to be a project manager? So, Robert, if we can just pull up the poll and share that with the audience. A simple yes, no, and hopefully, we're hoping that lots more people have been a little bit more inspired um, after hearing uh, everything that uh, Steve and I have had to say today. So we're gonna run that poll. I don't know if we're gonna see the results. Um, I, I'm not project managing this call, so I don't know. Um, but uh, I would like to thank Steve uh, for your time and your insight. Um, and I am going to hand back over to Darren. The poll has been published, I've been told. So if you just want to answer that, we'll leave it open for maybe another 10 seconds. It's just a quick yes, no. Are you in? Are you out? If you're not sure, 
you're more than welcome to ask more questions. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Darren, who is then going to host the questions from the floor for myself and Steve. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for that. Um, lot, lots of questions. And, and again, one of the challenges is we probably won't have a chance to go through them all. So if you have asked a question, I apologise if we don't get around to, to asking it. Um, the first question, which I think you've already covered, really, Steve, was um, how much does a project manager need to know about the technical detail of what they are managing? But I think you've covered that in your presentation, really, didn't you? Yeah, I, th I think um, it's not unimportant, but it's not it's not top of the list. And 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 that's uh, to somebody who's in a technical role. Sometimes that comes as a, as a shock. Um, and it's. I thought that um, something that, that happened to me um, all those years ago would have died out by now. And that's this, that people who are really good in their technical role, they're good engineers, they're, they're great technically, um, and they're, they get promoted to a people management role. In effect, what's happened is, you know, the boss has said, oh, you're really good with things, so we put you in charge of people. Uh, hang on. That's a bit strange. Why did that happen? Um, and so, you know, it's it, it's it's important, I think, to to understand that that transition. And you know, if somebody doesn't want to be a project manager, if they don't want to have people responsibility, I would say, well, that that's fine. You know, uh, it's there's, there's, you don't have to go down that route. Many organisations have parallel career paths for technical people uh, and, and 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 management, um, and so. Yeah, it's it's great if you want to, if you want to stay as a technical specialist, absolutely fine. Um, no no problem with that at all. Good. Um, and what would you say the key differences between a project engineer and a project manager? I suppose only in scale or scope, really. Um, as an engineer, it's possible just to have a narrow focus on, I've got this job to do, I've got this work package to deliver, I've got this um, module to to produce by, by this date. But as I was indicating before, um, a really good project engineer will start using some of the project management techniques to make that project go well. And almost like being a mini project manager, if you like, taking ownership for their own, own workload, getting good at estimating, um, comparing what happens in practice to what they thought was going to happen, reflecting on that, seeing what they seeing what they can learn. Um, and um, that estimating thing is, is, is a tricky one because I often hear people say, oh, yeah, but if I, you know, if I told the client how long it was really going to take, we'd, we'd, we'd never win the business. Um, and, and actually, you know, I would encourage people to to be honest and in and realistic in, in estimating and to work with reality rather than in the in the pretend world that would come back and bite us late, later on. So we've probably got a little bit off the topic there. Yeah, all good. Um, quite a specific one here. And again, whether you'd be able to answer this in, in, in the time we have, but what is the best method of project management to use? Uh, Waterfall, PMB, okay, etc. Okay, um, I've I've sometimes heard when when talking about project management, I've heard somebody say something like this: "Oh, we use Microsoft Project 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 Management in our organization." Oh, yeah, that's Microsoft Project, and I'm thinking that is such a such a blinkered view. Um, I think it. A good project manager, bearing in mind what I said about project management being a transferable skill, a good project manager will be able to work in an organization with whichever methodology that organization has adopted or none, if, 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 if needs be. So I wouldn't, I'm not recommending any one particular methodology over, over another. I think it's, it's good to have a, a methodology. Um, ideally, you have a methodology that is applied to all of the projects in an organization whether they are technical projects, engineering projects, whether they are uh, introducing a new HR system or um, an office move. All of those things 
should in a, in a, in a project-based organization, they should use the, the, the same methodology. And um, the question there included the word waterfall. People often um, uh, use the words, use that waterfall um, expression of, you know, of different phases of a project, one following on, on the other and say, oh, well, we don't do that anymore. We use the agile me methodology now where, um, where waterfall's a bit, a bit old hat. And I, and I would say whether it's waterfall or agile or whatever we're talking about here, um, we've got to be careful of not just jumping on the latest bandwagon, the latest flavor of the month. Uh, and, and in my view, when you know we run we run project management training courses that use waterfall, we run project management training courses that uh, are particularly encompassing agile. And we say, look, what we've got to do is to take the best bits the good bits we can't just sort of throw oh everything that we did in the past is wrong we're now we're now moving to a new way of doing things is to say let's keep the best bits let's see what can be improved um, a good project manager will always be looking for continuous improvement as soon as one project is finished we must always 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 review the project and say what are the things that didn't go so well and how can we avoid them in in the, in, in the future but also what things went did go well and what do we need to put in place to make sure that those things are repeated again in the future? So it's maybe not the answer that the person asking the question wanted, um, but I hope you see where I'm coming from on that. Very good. Um, this is quite a good question. Uh, do you need to have line management experience to be an effective project manager? And I guess another way of phrasing that is, um, is it beneficial to have line management experience before you become a project manager? Um, I've got to say uh, yes and no to that. I think yes, it's great to have line management responsibility because it means you will have already have experienced a lot of the uh, uh, the, the people management um, aspects of project management, which are so vital to, to good uh, project management. Um, but is it um, a necessary condition do you have to have line management experience before becoming a project management manager? No, you don't. Um, so yes, I think it's beneficial, but is it necessary? No. Very good. Um, and there's a couple of questions on this same theme, but uh, this kind of transition from moving from engineering to project management, uh, what, what are the kind of biggest challenges you faced uh, in, that, in, that, uh, in that move? Okay. Um, one that springs to mind is is this that with a technical background when problems come along uh, when when issues arise there are two common mistakes i think that that, that people in a, in a in a new project manager role will tend to make sometimes people have been in project management for a long long while will do this they may say um I know how to fix this. They roll their sleeves up, as it were, and get on the bench and get in there and sort it out. There you are. That's how to. That's how to do it. Um, and I think that's that's wrong for a couple of reasons. One is because as a project manager, we should be focusing on the overall project, the outcome, the benefits, the beneficial gain, and not get sidetracked into too much technical detail, which may cause problems later on down the line um, and secondly it, it's kind of jumping to conclusions oh I've seen this before I know I know how to fix this um, and it may well be that a, an, inno an innovative solution um, will come out of the team better if if the if the issue is discussed amongst the, the group and you know is given that much more attention um, Steve. So, uh, sorry. Fiona, Fiona, yeah, you going to say something? I was going to say, um, from from what I'm hearing, uh, ironically, uh, it sounds like uh, being a effective project manager would require really good um, active listening skills, and it and it sounds sometimes a bit silly to say, oh, you know, we we learn how to actively listen. But quite often, and I can imagine we're all guilty of this, you know, within meetings or at work, we we listen to respond. 
And actually, in terms of good project management, um, actually actively listening to what is going on for the project, what is the detail, what is happening for the individual departments and all of that kind of stuff will give you the right knowledge and the right information in order to make those really good decisions. It's yes, absolutely. And it's it's also, I think it's about it's a sort of um a neutrality um or a, or a being being a good chair really of 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 listening of of hearing all the different viewpoints and then it's about um effective um analysis and de decision making at um and and recognizing that whatever decision you make some people are going to be upset about it um you can't please everybody all of the time but what you can do is make sure that everybody has a voice they've had an opportunity to be involved in whatever the particular um thing is that that, that is that, uh, you know and seem to be the project managers seem to be uh, fair and uh, and not sort of favoring the the area that, that they came from you know if the project manager used to be a hardware engineer they would be saying, oh, the problem's got to be software. If the project manager was an ex-software engineer, they'd be saying, oh, that's a hardware problem, for instance. And we've got to guard against falling into that, that kind of uh, trap. There's a bit of a follow-up question to that, Steve. There's, there's a couple of questions here about almost like the characteristics of a good project manager. But uh, how would you define a great project manager? Oh, gosh. Would you just be yourself? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what would be a great a great project manager um well that is a difficult question isn't it um i'm thinking of, about you know in the um in the early stages of my career um all of the managers that i'd encountered i've got to say this were, were, were kind of shouty directive and unpleasant and it was quite a while before I worked for somebody who was a great guy and was not didn't fat, fit that pattern which you know I, I later discovered actually is the right way to do things and I think what I would say is a great project manager is somebody who gets the best from their team in other words, they create the conditions, the environment, the resources that are needed so that other people can be their best. Um, some people call it servant leadership. And I think that's a good that's a good expression for it is they, they do things that. Um, so at, at the end of the project, when it goes well, they say it was the team. If things have gone badly. They put their hand up and say, yeah, I take responsibility for that. That's a good project manager. Very good. Can I can I just add in, you know, it by having good rapport with your team, and it might not necessarily be people from your natural department or, you know, you might have to be working with, heaven forbid, sales or, you know, marketing or a, a, a different perspective. And actually by having good rapport and good relationships with those people when things go wrong because they always do they're delayed they're overrun that you know it's not working it's not what the client wants it's actually easier and better to be able to adopt and fix and and pivot if you do have a really good understanding a of the strengths of your team and creating that environment like steve said to make them as successful as they could possibly can be and not working against them but also, but also particularly when it's going badly, to say, look, guys, you know, we've got to pull together on this and this is what's happening. It's not about blame. But actually, if you have a good rapport with those people and you understand how they operate, um, then you're able to have those very straightforward conversations in particularly difficult times. Sorry, Darren, I cut you off. No, it's fine. I'm just conscious now we're, we're reaching the, the end of the session. So um, I have one last quick question, Steve. Um, would you recommend project management as a career and, and have you enjoyed yours? Darren, I think you know what I'm going to say to, the, to this. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a, 
it's a, a great thing to do. Um, every day is different. Um, it's very diverse, interesting. Um, I've enjoyed it. I've worked with some some great people. Um, and yeah, what, what, what more can you say, really? I think um, it's great. Excellent. Brilliant. So, yeah, again, I do apologize that we've not answered um, all the questions. Uh, if, if you can, if you want a specific question asked uh, and answered, if you email the training department, I think we put the link in the chat there. And we, we'll, we'll try our best to answer any specific questions around uh, career related uh, questions as well. Uh, the website uh, is a, the iMarkey.org website is a great resource for information on project management. We'll give you some ideas about the different qualifications, the different bespoke courses we can do, etc. as well. Um, but yes, any questions that we can help, you know, please direct them to the uh, to the email address in the in the chat. And I hope that you've enjoyed the session. Thanks to the, the two hosts. It's been a great session. A little bit different today, but I think it's really worked. And uh, much appreciated for everybody who's logged in today as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.